Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone had a nice weekend. Uh, to my right is Dr. Kara Christ. She's the director of Arizona Health Services. And to my left is Major General Mick McGuire. He, uh, he leads our National Guard here in Arizona, and he also uh, heads up the Department of Emergency Management for the state of Arizona. Uh, before we begin, let me just uh, again say thank you. Uh, how grateful I am to the people of Arizona. The, these are challenging times, uh, and I'm aware of that, of course. Uh, I want to thank everybody for their responsible and prudent behavior, and I also want to say uh, I'm very hopeful for what's possible going forward. I asked a couple weeks ago uh, and last week uh, for patience, and uh, I said I think there may be a light at the end of this tunnel, uh, and I'm here today to show you where we are. Our approach has been calm and steady. Uh, the urgent action that we has, have taken is to protect public health. Uh, in Arizona, given our specific Arizona situation, we have had later timing and a lighter touch in placing restrictions on our economy. But the decisions that have been made have been informed by data and medical information to be where we are right now. And of course, I want to say again, public health has been the top concern and it will remain the top concern. If you, if you search uh, opening up America again, what comes up is the White House gating criteria. This has been the criteria that's been given to all 50 governors. Uh, there's a lot of verbiage on this page. I'm not gonna read all of it. If you're interested, like I said, opening up America again. But it gives you uh, a measurement on symptoms. It gives you a measurement on cases and it gives you a measurement on hospitals. And I think you'll be able to see the thoughtfulness of this plan and the logic. I want to say a special thank you to uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, uh, to Dr. Deborah Burks for the amount of thought that has gone into this. And of course, uh, with Dr. Christ, uh, we just were able to visit with the vice president, all 50 governors, uh, the, the medical federal, uh, leaders and uh, go through where states are uh, on this. I think one thing that's important to, to remember here is each state is different and this does provide flexibility for states to tailor application of these criteria to local circumstances. So let's talk about Arizona's symptoms and what this is specifically is a downward trajectory of influenza-like illnesses reported within a 14-day period and a downward trajectory of COVID-like syndromic cases reported within a 14-day period. The gold line is COVID-like illnesses. The blue line is influenza-like illnesses beginning of December 29th of 1919, of 2019. Uh, I think you can see uh, where the, the line is on the, on the Y axis uh, on uh, March 31st. That's when the stay home, stay connected, uh, stay healthy order was issued. What you've seen in the successive weeks following is a downward trajectory, both in COVID-like illnesses and influenza-like illnesses. Uh, and influenza-like illnesses all the way to 0%, effectively the end of flu season. This is a good trajectory for Arizona. Now let's talk cases. Downward trajectory is what you're looking for of documented cases within a 14 day period or a downward trajectory of positive cases as a percent, a percent of total tests within a 14-day period. So this is our COVID-19 cases by day. 
you can see the first case was on January 26th and go through the timeline. Uh, if you fill in for uh, weekend reporting, uh, this information uh, doesn't give you a trend and it really doesn't tell you much except the number of, of cases. If you were going to look uh, for anything b beyond that, uh, I, I don't think that you could add, add much more to that. This chart is different. This is the percentage of, of positive cases. Now, I want to make sure people aren't confused by a positive case. A positive case means that you've contracted COVID-19. So a positive case is not to be confused with positive news. It means that you have tested with the virus. Okay, the bars that you see along the dates here, this is the number of tests conducted. The blue part of the bar, that is when COVID-19 was not detected. The gold part of the bar is when COVID-19 was detected. If you follow the trend line here, you can see that we have been steady across the course of these tests with a downward trajectory over the last two weeks. That downward trajectory is very positive over that 14 day period. Now hospitals, the ability to treat all patients without crisis care. Many of you have seen these charts uh, before, so I'm gonna move briskly through them. The gray area, and this is, of course, if you're sick, you need a hospital bed. The gray area is available hospital beds. The blue, the blue on, the, on the line uh, rep represents the hospital beds that are in use, and the gold represents the number of beds that represent COVID-19 patients. Uh, if you're gonna take anything away from this, it would be one, we have hospital capacity, and two, that the COVID transactions have been steady across the board, somewhere between seven and 9%. ICU beds, the colors represent the same thing in terms of availability, how many ICU beds are in use, and then the number of COVID patients that are inside our ICUs. Again, the takeaway here would be that the COVID transmission has been steady across the board without a spike, and we have ICU capacity. And lastly, ventilators. We have an incredible amount of ventilators available. That's good news. If you're very sick and you cannot breathe on your own, you need a ventilator. You can see the number of ventilators we have in use and the number of ventilators that we have in use for COVID-19 patients. Again, the same takeaway. We have capacity in hospital beds, in ICUs, in ventilators. Arizona is prepared. And if you look at the framework that uh, Dr. Burks and Dr. Fauci put together, uh, it really comes to light that you begin with symptoms, and it makes sense that if you have symptoms, you need to be tested. Uh, and there's the possibility or a higher possibility that you're going to test positive and have COVID-19. If that's the case, you'll have an addition of cases that you have. If those cases are severe, you need to care for those people. And where do you do that? In the hospitals, in the ICUs, in, uh, and of course with, with ventilators. Again, we are prepared on, on all these fronts and we have good trends with our symptoms and our cases. So let's talk testing. You need a robust testing program in place for at-risk healthcare workers, including emergent antibody testing and trace contacts of COVID-19 results. Sonora Quest, which is from the private sector, is building capacity to do 3,000 tests per day Later this month in Arizona, anybody needing testing for, as a consumer uh, won't need a provider's order or in, insurance. And antibody testing tells you if you've contracted COVID-19 uh, and have recovered. And I think most people remember Dr. Bobby Robbins from the University of Arizona. 
Uh, he's leading an effort that will have 250,000 antibody tests for our healthcare workers, first responders, and university students. In addition, we had an Arizona testing blitz this past weekend. It was week one. It was a major success. We're going to uh, expand this. So if you think you have COVID-19 or you've been exposed to COVID-19, you can go to azhealth.gov and sign up for one of these tests. The next two Saturdays will be a major expansion of this testing blitz. So let's look at the testing by day over the last half of April and the first part of May. This represents tens of thousands of tests, I think somewhere up, upwards uh, uh, over 85,000 uh, to, to date. You can see how these tests have ramped up uh, over the course of, of time. We'll continue to do that. The blitz was on Saturday. There will be a blitz next Saturday and the following Saturday. Whenever you're testing more people, you're going to have more cases, okay? So more tests will result in more cases. What's important is to remember the percentage of positive tests, the percentage of people that contract COVID-19. And that is what's on the downward trajectory. Again, this is the trend you're looking for. It's a good trend and it gives us the confidence to make some economic decisions safely. Let's also talk contract tracing. This is something uh, that is within the White House guidelines with CDC guidance. This is something that will further slow the spread as we identify positive cases of individuals that have contracted COVID-19. Department of Health Services will have a robust program there will be details on that to follow. So let's get to several announcements. Uh, first on uh, long-term care facilities. Long-term care facility, our goal is we wanna test everyone inside our long-term care facilities. We're gonna increase the testing and prioritize our vulnerable population and staff within congregate settings. We are moving to where our largest concern is in these congregate settings. We want to enhance infection control recommendations for these facilities. So along with the long-term care facilities, we'll be focusing on the Arizona Department of Corrections, recidivism, and reentry. With additional supplies, swabs, reagents, rapid testing machines, we're gonna expand testing for inmates and correctional officers alike. Also, long-term care facility notification. There were some questions about this at the last press conference. If you have someone who is a loved one inside a long-term care facility, as I do, if they were to contract COVID-19, you would be contacted immediately. If someone who is not your loved one contracts COVID-19 in that same long-term care facility, you would be contacted immediately. If you would choose to remove your loved one from that long-term care facility, and you would wanna take them to another long-term care facility, and they were approved as a patient, you would be notified immediately on the COVID-19 circumstances for that long-term care facility. Now let's talk some economic decisions. The idea here is we want to return stronger as a state. It is this virus and this global pandemic that has done so much to slow our economy and affect our citizens here in Arizona. We've talked about the Arizona way in terms of how we will return to economic health, vitality, and momentum. It will be a gradual and phased in process, and that will continue. We're gonna balance public health, and we are gonna prioritize public health while planning to return stronger as a state over the course of time. We're gonna increase testing to return while maintaining strong physical distancing. So you're gonna see the, a focus 
more of a focus on testing going forward. So people have their own personal information as employers have to make decisions as well. And then we're going to phase in return based on the recommendations of the CDC and health experts through May and June. This has been my North Star the entire time through this pandemic, and it will continue to be. So I think it's fair to say today that Arizona is headed in the right direction. We have a downward trajectory of influenza and COVID-like illnesses. We have a downward trajectory of positive tests. That means a downward trajectory of the percentage of people that are contracted COVID-19. We can treat all patients without crisis care, and we are rapidly expanding testing availability, including antibody testing and contact tracing. So this is a green light to make additional decisions or for our first step forward. Our approach has not been a light switch. It has been turning that light dial responsibly and appropriately given the information and facts that we have. So services that are currently resuming in Arizona, effective May 1st, elective surgeries from authorized hospitals and outpatient surgical centers resume with elective surgeries if they can demonstrate uh, adequate capacity. We've had uh, 1,100 uh, folks that have opened on May 1st. Retail shopping on Monday, May 4th, limited opening through appointments, curbside pickup and delivery. And on Friday, May 8th, will be a full reopening with strict physical distancing and CDC guidelines. Now, many of you are already inside retail establishments like grocery stores and Costco's, et cetera with responsible behavior and physical distancing. This is what you can expect as the remainder of retail uh, establishments reopen on Friday. Next, barbers and salons. On Friday, May 8th, barbers and salons may reopen. There will be public health protections, CDC guidelines that are available at azhealth.gov. There will be reduced capacity and occupancy, uh, enhanced sanitation protocols, uh, masks, physical distancing, uh, and depending on occupancy level, uh, business uh, by appointment. Next, we talked about last week an aspirational date around dine-in services. Today, I'm able to give a date certain of Monday, May 11th, dine-in services can reopen. There will be physical distancing inside these establishments. We're working closely with the industry uh, and they will have this week to prepare uh, and there will be more to follow on this, but I want the restaurant industry to know uh, that this is what's going to happen next week. We've been in conversations for several weeks. This is a safe and good option uh, at, at this time, and they'll have a full week in which to prepare. Now, some things aren't changing today, uh, especially our most vulnerable. If you're 65 years old or older, if you have an underlying health condition, including high blood pressure, lung disease, diabetes, obesity, you remain in that vulnerable category. Please make the proper decisions. And I also want to thank our employers and businesses. They've been responsible. They've made special accommodations. Please continue to do that as we go into phase one. Whatever is happening in terms of telework and those accommodations, just continue to do that. That's, that is a best practice. Uh, you know the drill on this. This is what's going to be important as not only we get through the summer, but we head into whatever unknowns are in front of us. The good habits we've acquired around washing your, your, your hands, not touching your face, covering your cough, and of course, if you feel sick, just please stay home. 
take the day off or more. Uh, what's next? We're working with the fitness industry. Uh, so there will be more to follow here. If you'll recall, the, the fitness industry closed by and large voluntarily before some of the announcements that we've made. We've got some uh, discussions that we need to finalize with them. We want to work with the fitness industry uh, along with our hotels and motels and uh, our apartments on what the proper guidance is around gyms uh, and, and pools, uh, of course, informed by the CDC. So the objective here is that we return stronger. And you can see where the plan is to reinvigorate our economy. If you're, uh, if you're looking for, for a headline over what the next week looks like, it's that Arizona is headed in the right direction. Get your hair cut, get something to eat, and head home. That's where it's safest. Dr. Christ? So just um, on our most recent stats, as of today, we've had 8,919 cases in 15 counties. There have been over 85,000 tests performed, and we're hoping that that continues to go up. And we've lost 362 Arizonans to this disease. So thank, thank you, you very much, Doctor. And for, for an update, uh, Major General McGuire. Thank you, Governor. Uh, in the Guard, we continue to be uh, laser focused. Uh, uh, as the state emergency managers on uh, making sure we have sustainable PPE for the entire state. Uh, we were one of uh, the states that received the Battelle system. We thank the federal government for uh, procuring 60 of those, putting them on contract, and received the first shipment of uh, goods this weekend, which will allow us to decontaminate and uh, uh, create a sustainable um, use of uh, N95s, uh, a system they're using in California right now, should be up and running in the next 10 days. And uh, we've made a couple of change orders that'll give us that surge capacity that we hope we never need out at St. Luke's. And that's coming along uh, quite well with the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, we still uh, are uh, working hard with Task Force Aviation and our sustainment of uh, activities on the Navajo Nation and our thoughts and prayers are with them as they continue to manage the situation there and we're providing all the federal and state resources they request. Thank you very much General McGuire and uh, now let's go to questions Patrick. Howdy. So it's a very good question, and, and of course I've talked with our, our legislative leaders as well, and I want to say thank you to our legislative leaders, uh, people in both parties, for uh, how responsible you've been and for advice and counsel. Uh, I also know that there are different things in, in different parts of, of the state. Uh, in terms of, uh, we're working with the industry on specific guidance ar around uh, wh where we are in, on dine-in and, and on bars. I think we've all been to, to different places where you go in and you get a, a cheeseburger uh, and there's, there's TVs and you might get a cold beverage. Uh, they may be licensed as, as a bar, but they are essentially a dine-in establishment. We want to work with the industry so that there's flexibility, so that those places can, can reopen. And um, in terms of movie theaters, we're working with the industry there. What they have said to us is Hollywood's not going to provide us any additional product or any new product until July 15th. That's the date that they've requested. Um, I'm open-minded. Uh, if, uh, if that were something that were to happen or uh, a, a change that were there. But like I said, we are working with the industry so that we can do this in, in a safe, uh, uh, balanced way. But I guess the question is, you know, the guidance that you provided were across the board, whether it's social distancing, whether it's testing, whether it's the whole thing, which is the you're telling me a bar owner can't figure out now whether they've got serious 10 or serious 7 or whatever? 
they can't figure out I said this what I said Howie I said that we're going to work with the industry so that we can provide a proper guidance uh, in terms of like the lar part of this goes to the, the logic in terms of slowing the spread. And that was the places of largest congregation. Okay, that was schools and spring training and Major League Baseball. Some of those decisions were made by, by uh, public officials. Some of those were, were made by the industry. But it's, that reopening is going to, you're gonna see kind of that incremental uh, size of the establishment is how we're making some of these decisions because we're still very uh, closely observing the the numbers around the spread of COVID-19. So th that's that's the logic behind the decision making, both from CDC in terms of symptoms, cases, hospitals, and testing, and that's the logic in terms of economic reopening. So this is this is a step forward into phase one, and if you want to look uh, at, the, at the guidance provided from the CDC, that is what has informed the public health decisions, and that's what I'm, if you want to say uh, it's been too cautious, I accept that, okay? Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, uh, an illness and a virus that has been spreading rapidly. We understand much more today than we did six weeks ago. And I'm hopeful and optimistic as to what can happen over the next several weeks. We're going to go over here to Billy. Hi, Billy. Uh, hi, how are you? Governor, um, many experts, including Dr. Fauci, you mentioned, warned that as you start to open things up across the state, that we could see a second wave. God if you do see a second wave that could be worse than what we're going through right now, are you prepared to shut everything down again? So thank you, Billy. Uh, of course, when I say repeatedly that public health is my top concern, what we want to avoid is a second wave. That's why if some of the folks out there that have said, go faster or you're being too cautious, well, that's because we don't want a second wave. We're making decisions with the confidence that we are going in the right direction and can continue to make decisions in time that will turn the light brighter with more economic momentum uh, for our state. That's where we are today. Of course, we're going to retain every tool that's, that's necessary to protect public health, but I would also say we're a lot smarter today than we were in January, February, March, and April around this pandemic. We know who's most vulnerable. I shared with you where we are on hospital capacity and uh, intensive care units and ventilators. So if, God forbid, things were to turn in the wrong direction uh, and spike, which we're not seeing that sign right now anywhere, Arizona's prepared. say is we are rapidly ramping up testing. You can see the, the dramatic increase in percentage of tests that have happened in, in the last week alone. Our testing has been prioritized on health care providers and people that were symptomatic. If you remember in some of these meetings that we've had, uh, there was a frustration because people that thought they had COVID-19 or thought they had been exposed to COVID-19 couldn't get a test because they weren't symptomatic. That's where the priority was along with the people on the front lines. Now we've opened that up wide open if you believe you've, you've been exposed. That's what happened on Saturday. That's what happens next Saturday and the Saturday following. With that dramatic increase of people getting tested, you could see the percentage of people that had contracted COVID had gone down two weeks in a row. That gives us the confidence that these uh, measured, gradual decisions in terms of turning the dial on our economy are good ones and they're safe. But again, there's concerns of a second wave. We just had that question. But I didn't hear an answer as far as what is your plan 
if we have a second wave? So the discussion around the second wave, and I'm going to let Dr. Christ address this because I think this is more something informed by epidemiology. Uh, but typically, as you can see, effectively our flu season is over, according to our charts. The discussion around the second wave is with anything possible, because this is a, n a novel coronavirus, uh, is likely to be in the fall. So like I said, the idea of, of being prepared, think of the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of tests that we'll be able to conduct both diagnostic and antibody test between now and whatever time flu season starts in the fall that will further inform our decisions, but along the way, we will have hospital capacity and we all have ventilators. But Dr. Chris, will you talk about uh, this idea of, of a second wave, both at, at this time and then what's, what's possible in the fall or what the rest of the country would call flu season? Sure. Yes. Thanks, Nicole. So what we'll be doing is we'll be monitoring the data as we move forward. So that's why we're not giving future dates just in case we had to say, you know what, we're going to slow down. We saw how this impacted and, and we want to make sure that we're we're able to respond. We'll continue monitoring the health of our healthcare system because that's really what the, the trying to reduce the cases um, had to, we were trying to protect that. They are in good shape. We'll continue to monitor what our capacity is. Now the concern is what do you do when you have flu season in addition to potential COVID cases that may be looking for the same resources. And so that's why we continue to work on getting alternate care sites in place in case there were a surge coming in the fall at the same time as influenza. What has changed are protests, uh, sheriffs saying we're going to disobey uh, the governor's orders, and, and as it happens, Donald Trump comes to visit tomorrow. How much of an impact I would, uh, uh, I, I would, zero, I would really push back uh, on what has changed in terms of data. I took you through the, the White House gating criteria. I showed you where Arizona is, and all of our decisions have been informed by public health with the guidance of the CDC and in alignment with Dr. Kara Christ. I have said several times, there is no one in the state that has a higher sense of urgency in reopening our economy when it is safe to do so. The decisions we are disclosing today are safe and that's why I'm communicating them. What would you say to the sheriffs who said, a couple of sheriffs and maybe third said this, this may be the answer to uh, several questions this afternoon, but there's always going to be outliers in any situation. I would say that by and large, overwhelmingly, the people of Arizona have been fantastic. They have been responsible. Uh, they have been kinder than necessary in this situation, and they have been patient. And I want to express uh, from where I sit my gratitude. I'm thankful. One more thing about long-term care facilities. Uh, Ali Blunt, what it took so long? This was obvious from the beginning that those facilities needed testing just as prisons did. And as of last week, uh, Rebecca Sunshine at the county said, well, I'd love to test all of them, but we can't get the supplies. Well, I, I appreciate, I, I appreciate uh, your bluntness. The first executive order that we put forward, the first one on the same day we declared a public health emergency in Arizona was to protect our long-term care facilities. Now, I've said the entire time, we need more testing. We want more testing. We've requisitioned more testing. And we're going to continue to ramp that up. And we're going to bring all available protections uh, to our long-term care facilities, to our correctional officers, to our inmates, to these congregate settings. We're going to go back here. You have a question? Yeah, sorry. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Based on the data, it looked like 6,500 um, tests happened on Saturday for the testing blitz. 
I was wondering, you know, that kind of shy of the 10,000 to 20,000 that was expected, how are you going to be kind of getting that number up over the next two Saturdays? So it's a good question, uh, and I don't know if everyone could hear the question. We wanted, we said 10,000 tests available on Saturday, 6,500 tests were, were available. The only criteria we put out there was that we wanted people that thought they had contracted COVID-19 or had been exposed to COVID-19 to go. We want people that believe that they may be sick. Uh, part of it's the people that go and apply for the test, the amount of time people are willing to, to wait in a line to get the test. I want to say to our, our National Guard, uh, to our private uh, uh, partners, I, I heard Banner had a, a line that, where they could take 15 uh, rows of, of cars a, at a time, but we would like to see people that fall into those two categories go get a test this Saturday. Dr. Chris, do you have anything to add? Sure. The only other thing that I would add is there's about a four to seven day lag on reports. And so those reports for additional tests will continue to come in, but they will be dated on the day that that test was collected. Can you just be clear to tell us how many tests were done that day? Because we're getting different numbers. We'd like to all have We are still waiting on the reporting from all of those facilities. We sent out a reminder email today to, to get that, but we probably will have the final numbers midweek. So what about that 65 so the 6,500 number were the reports that actually have already been reported. So those came in either late Saturday, on Sunday, or this morning, and have already been compiled. We, we still expect to get additional lab results in. We're going to go to the board here and answer a Zoom question. We're going to go to Rachel Leinke from the Arizona Republic. Rachel, go ahead. Um, Dr. Chris, can you go into detail about the contact tracing and if the state will give more funding to counties to do this properly? Yes, absolutely. So as we look at contact tracing, Arizona has done contact tracing for decades. It's part of a public health activity. With the um, CARES Act that was just passed, we are getting federal funding that will be passed down to our local health departments so that they can enhance their current contact tracing strategies as well as implementing an enhanced state level contact tracing that can expand to be up to 40 teams. So we are continuing to, to pilot that and it will be in place by this Friday. Yeah, Governor, uh, the unemployment compensation system is still not working for a significant number of Arizonans. You have thousands of people who cannot get money owed from these stimulus actions. You know, why can't you rapidly get this fixed and what would you say to those who are waiting? So first, I, I want to say to, to everyone in, in Arizona that's, that's lost a job or has had a reduction in income, uh, my heart goes out to you. Part of the, the reason that we want to make sure we've got our arms around the public health side of this is that we can get you your job back and we can get you back into the workforce when it's, when it's safe to do so. In the interim, there are benefits available. $840 a week that has come not only uh, from the CARES Act, and I oftentimes in these settings will beat up on Congress, but when Congress gets something done and along with state government can provide that lifeline to individuals, we want to see them get that. So no excuses uh, on, on this. This has just been such an astronomical rise. The unemployment was not something we were focused on at, at, at all in Arizona. Our number had remained steady. A few thousands would fall off the rolls every week. A few thousand would join. We've gone from, from almost everyone that wanted a job being able to find a job to over 400,000 people that need these benefits. The good news is the dollars are there. And I know about the business signals that you're facing. Uh, Tom Betlick is on this 24 seven, whatever dollars he needs in terms of new employees or, or additional servers and, and computer uh, uh, resources, he has. So that is ramping up. Uh, Please keep trying. If you can go online and do this, I've heard that that's more seamless and, and convenient, but I know there are folks that need to talk to someone and, uh, and we're gonna fix it. Uh, and I, I'm grateful for their patience. I, I know it, it's been difficult. It's been a crush that no one could have ever expected. Is there any accountability there? I mean, we haven't heard from Mr. Betlack, as you mentioned. I mean, are you putting pressure on him to get this fixed? Because it's been weeks. Well, I, 
want to say yes, of course, there's accountability. Uh, Tom Betlack is going to get the job done. He's the one who's really identified. Uh, we'll have a much better Department of Economic Security as we get through this. Hopefully, we won't need it uh, in the same way that we need it right now. But because uh, there's so many things that have been stressed throughout this pandemic. What we've learned about uh, our PPE supply, the amount of ventilators that we have on space, where we can build a field hospital if that were ever necessary. And we'll have a better DES uh, at the end of this. I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm confident of that, I'm certain of that. And the other thing I wanna say, while the bad news is this is inconvenient to, to get inside the system, the, the good news is, is the dollars are there. Okay, the dollars are there. There's not a one week waiting period. Th they will happen uh, right along with your application and the appropriate procedure. We're gonna go back here, Captain. Oh, I see you. Antonio, tell us you go. Governor, what are your plans with President Trump tomorrow? So uh, the, the question is, what are my plans with President Trump? Uh, many people know that uh, Arizona is working with, with Honeywell who of course has its, its, its regional manufacturing here for the Western United States. They've changed over manufacturing lines uh, to, to uh, develop and, and manufacture N95 masks for the state of Arizona. They've committed uh, over six million masks at a very reasonable price. Uh, there'll be masks available for other states around the nation as necessary. And uh, President Trump wanted to see the manufacturing plant. Do you plan on meeting with him tomorrow? Yes. And uh, is, that, is that what you guys will only be discussing? Any, any, your thoughts about his visit, maybe? Well, I'm discussing time. with him uh, all the things that are Arizona specific. Uh, first, around uh, testing needs. I understand that tests have been prioritized elsewhere because of the hotspots that you've seen in places like New York and New Jersey and, and Michigan and Baton Rouge. Now that our supply chains are catching up, uh, we want to ramp up that testing, both diagnostic and antibody. Uh, so the idea of the focus around public health and how the federal government can, can be helpful there. And like I said, they've been incredibly responsive. The one hot spot need that we had was uh, Navajo Nation. And uh, President Trump personally reached out on, on that, uh, along with the advocacy, advocacy of Senator Martha McSally. And then I want to talk to him also about uh, economic uh, resurgence of, for our state. Matt, go ahead. Governor, I want to uh, kind of follow up this next question. When you say the dollars are there, um, for restaurant workers, if they can go back on the 11th, a lot of them who have reached out to me have said, I'm not eligible for state benefits, but they say, wait for the PUA, the pandemic unemployment assistance, which goes live on the 12th. So if they go back to work on the 11th, are they no longer eligible for that money that they have yet to get in like two months or so? So Matt, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, it's one I don't have the answer to. I'll get you the answer and tell you what it is. I, I, I think as, uh, as optimistic as I am about the data that we have, and like I said, this is our first step in, into phase one and that we're going to be able to turn the dial slightly on that brightening of our economy. There's a lot of people that want to go back to work immediately. They want to get whatever benefits that they had or wherever they were on, on their career path. But there are still a lot of questions that need to be answered around the, the benefits that are available and the PUA is, is part of that. So let me get the answer and, and, and we'll post that on uh, azhealth.gov uh, unless we, uh, it happens, we meet again before that. The stay-at-home order is, is still there until the 15th. And the expectation uh, on, on the stay-at-home order uh, is, is that it expires 
on the 15th. Of course, we are looking at the data. Of course, we're prioritizing public health and the reduction of this spread. Arizonans are smart. They have common sense. The order the entire time has been stay home, stay healthy, stay connected. So if you wanted to go for a run or a walk or go to the grocery store for, for supplies, you've been doing that. Now, if you want to take a loved one out to dinner on the 11th or the 12th uh, or go get a haircut, you can do that, too. That's why I said then you can head home. JJ, uh, Governor, should businesses that decide to reopen be shielded from liability for anything that, that might happen? And that's A. And B, are you comfortable with um, a liability shield being tied to any assistance for state and local governments that are really struggling financially in, um, in a federal legislation? So this is a question I, I get a lot, and I think uh, the first thing I would say is I would expect businesses to act responsibly and to make r responsible decisions in the light of what we now know, just like our citizens have done now for, for weeks and, and weeks. Uh, in terms of this idea of, of liability, uh, that didn't exist before or a protection around liability. I want to work with our legislature uh, to make the, the most responsible uh, decisions around that. So there's more to follow on that. And are you familiar, are you comfortable with that being tied to assistance for state and local government? I think in Arizona, we've made tough decisions over the, the last six years. Uh, I'm working with uh, the federal government. Uh, Secretary Mnuchin was on the call today. Uh, I lead a conference call of, of governors from around the country twice a week. Uh, I would like to see flexibility on dollars that are uh, co coming to the state so that we can do uh, what's best for our citizens in terms of, uh, of course, handling the, the health situation, but making sure that people don't fall through the cracks and are able to return uh, to a job. That's my objective. So uh, you've asked this question several times. Uh, I'm, I'm very well advised legally. We are under a public health emergency. Uh, it, that is still in place. We're making decisions as we head out the other side of this pandemic. And over the course of time, we, we will we'll get there where these things will, will no longer uh, be in existence. But we're, sti we're still in the public health emergency. I'm focused 100% on the public health emergency and bringing our economy back. That's where my focus is. We, I am confident, I am in alignment with CDC guidelines and with public health. This is what has informed those decisions. And of course, if these worst case scenarios, which you want to point out, happen, we have options. So it's, it's safety first. Uh, it's been steady as, as she goes. Uh, it's been making uh, uh, the best possible decision informed by all the data and information that we have, and that's what's being done today. So it's not too soon. Are those options or those devices, that, so to speak, that you have in your toolbox, does that include closing businesses again? I know you want to avoid this. We all want to avoid it. But are the tools including closing businesses and non-essentials again? I, 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 I believe this question has been asked and, and answered several times. I take the responsibility of public health very seriously. I think that everyone can see by what's happened over the last past eight weeks. I wouldn't be making the decisions that I'm making today if they weren't informed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and were within these guidelines uh, 
along with the alignment of, of Dr. Christ. We're going to do whatever we need to do to protect the people of, of Arizona. But today, these are steps in the right direction. They're balanced and they're safe. Any on, on, on us, uh, tattoo parlors, facade parlors, uh, stuff like that. I know you mentioned you know, restaurants through May, on May 11th, but what about these other types of non essential? We're, we're, we're working with the industries on this. Uh, most of the questions are around uh, industries that fall into phase one or, or phase two, and those are the discussions we're having. To wrap it up, one more from Zach here. Yeah, Dr. Christ, I want to ask you about long-term care facilities. A lot of these we've seen have been hot spots with you know, a rapid number of cases and deaths increasing. Uh, I think the governor and you both have the ability to call for mandatory testing in some of these facilities where you know there are cases. Is that something you're exploring? Because a number of these facilities have said we haven't been able to get the number of tests we need for all of our staff and residents. So the strategy for our, our testing of long-term care, we are going to be starting with some of those facilities, um, one northern, one central, and one in the south. And then we'll be moving towards doing every single facility. So every resident and every employee in those long-term care facilities. Um, and the reason that we were able to do that is because now we, we are getting adequate supplies to be able to do that. And we're partnering with some of our commercial lab partners to run those tests. And then, um, what we're trying to do is we're going to see how this pilot goes, how long it takes to test in those first facilities so that we can identify um, how long we think that the timeline is going to take as well as watching the PPE supply to make sure that the facilities have the appropriate supplies that they need. When are you going to start testing north, central, and south? How we will. So they're, they're working with the facilities this week to start testing next Monday. My last question on that, the AARP after our press or your news conference last week sent you a letter basically stating there's no leg to stand on when it comes to HIPAA or state law for not releasing the COVID-19 data from these long-term care facilities. Did you respond to AARP and what do you make of their very detailed letter saying you should release this data? We are still working with our legal counsel on the release of that data. I don't think I've seen that letter though. One more question, last question from Lorraine Rivera from AZPM on Zoom. Lorraine, go ahead. Hi there, I wanted to know if salons can offer services to include things like nails, waxing, massages, and can the restaurant also serve alcohol? So Lorraine, uh, thank you. The, the answer to uh, both of those questions would, would be yes. And uh, I wanna thank you for your time today. Uh, I want to uh, close by just saying uh, how grateful I am to the people of Arizona. Uh, we're headed in the right direction, and it's because of your responsible behavior that we've been able to slow the spread of this virus, that we have the right trends around our, our symptoms, our cases, our hospital capacity, and our testing. There's more to do, but the fact that I can say that over the next week, you're gonna be able to, to go to your barber or salon, that you're gonna be able to go out uh, for a, a meal, uh, and more to follow. It's gonna be steady as she goes, uh, but I wanna thank everyone for their time, for their patience, and more to follow. I'm sure we'll see you uh, either later this week or early next. Thanks.